Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. And obviously all the news today is all about the Super Tuesday that we just had over in the US where it looks like we are going to see a showdown between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And uh, that in itself is going to be quite interesting come November. It's not all completely done and dusted yet. You had Bernie Sanders come uh, quite, well, relatively close. He had, he had four wins versus Clinton seven, um, whereas Donald Trump pretty much almost got everything um, with only a, a small number of, uh, of other candidates in his regions getting you know, much love at all. So if Clinton wins versus Donald Trump or that, that battle in the White House, and uh, most people are probably thinking that if Donald Trump wins, gonna be there's going to be a standoff with, uh, with Mexico over the famous wall, issues with China, more confrontation, more uh, uncertainty. Um, the markets might not react that well, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, who probably looks like the favorite, if I'm completely honest right now, looking at the, the trades this morning. If she wins, that would probably be better for the markets. Um, she perhaps more, uh, more, more hawkish on the, on the economy. Um, the question is, I guess, is with Clinton's cozy relationship with a lot of the big uh, American banks, um, she has been paid maybe about more $680,000 for some speeches that she gave at Goldman Sachs, for an example. You know, there is questions about how hard she's likely to try and be to get to kind of shake off that, that image that she's too cozy to Wall Street. So there is talk that there might be some limited additional regulation uh, that she might kind of bring, into the, bring in, in, into the banking space. It might just be a little bit of lip service just to say, hey, look, I'm not too cozy with the banks. Look what I did to them. Um, but that could be something to, to bear in mind if you are looking at uh, US banks longer term. Um, so the fact is most uh, US markets are actually slightly higher uh, following that result, I think it's because if, uh, if Hillary Clinton is the favorite and she gets in, uh, that's kind of really what the markets would prefer. In regards to obviously if Donald Trump gets, uh, gets ahead in the polls, things really perhaps take a bit of a, a, a side turn, mainly because he's such an unknown quantity, being such a firebrand politician, you know, really he could do anything and he's so confrontational, uh, what could happen next? So it could be quite exciting uh, and that gives us quite a number of months till we get to November to find out. Um, Putin also managed to uh, kind of shake things up on the oil market yesterday uh, as he basically said that he's only now just starting to talk to Russian oil firms about a freeze in production, which is already at record levels. The market had already thought that he'd already had the discussion. And in fact, the, the initial uh, aspects that came out of that was that no, they're not looking to, uh, to freeze production anytime soon. And that caused crude oil to take a little bit of a hit yesterday as well. So that gives you a bit of an idea about the fundamentals. It's all about the, the US Super Tuesday and um, you're trying to shore up the Republican and Democrat um, candidates now. And it is looking increasingly likely it will be Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. But let's go ahead and have a look at things from a technical perspective now as well. So you can see that uh, bullish engulfing pattern that we had on the uh, US 30 there smashing up through 16.626, not a far away from 17,038. 83% of CMC Marcus clients are currently, law, are currently short. Sorry, uh, We do almost have a sell signal on the slow stochastic, but it's not yet broken over the level. Uh, we're not yet oversold on the ultimate oscillator yet. We are above both moving averages. Uh, we have a little bit of a doji formation so far this morning, but it's still early days. Moving on to the UK 100, another technical breakout on there. We're in between two ranges, 63.27 and 60.70. And that's even in the, bank of, uh, in the back of quite a, f yeah, a few UK banks getting smashed yesterday, particularly Barclays, which is feeling unloved at the moment. And as you can see, we've got kind of a doji formation, graveyard doji formation right now. A uh, similar technical picture to the US market, though we're perhaps slightly more overextended in the UK than the US is. 71% of CMC markets clients are currently short. Moving on to Japan 225, we managed to punch up through 16,387. Look to be rechallenging 16,896. Other technicals still show further room for maneuver. As you can see, this is underperforming the US 30 and the UK 100. 80% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. Moving on to dollar yen. Um, the dollar managing to rally up against the Japanese yen. Bullish engulfing pattern. We are bouncing around that 55 period SMA right now. 54% of CMC Marcus clients currently short. Showing a little bit of indecision, but we are in between two ranges. Other technicals are relatively neutral, just further room for maneuver. Moving on to West Texas crude, um, volatile session. So it was at a lot higher and then got pushed, pushed down lower. It actually pretty much ended exactly where it, where it closed. Um, and we're just slightly moving up a little bit higher this morning. 80% of CMC market clients are currently short. Uh, it does look to be a little bit of short-term potential resistance around the tips of these candles. 
If we even just take the high from here, you are looking at 33 spot 85 and change before we start to get that little bit higher. Um, then moving on to gold. Gold has uh, failed to break that little bit higher yesterday. Still seems to be hugging this potential trend line right here. That could be kind of interesting for us to look at. Uh, we didn't really get our full technical breakout of this potential symmetrical triangle formation. Um, and it looks to be we're making a series of lower highs right here, unfortunately. Uh, let's see how that pans out. 76% of CMC market clients are currently long. Uh, and this is where we are in the longer term picture. So um, it could be quite interesting to see how that pans out. Um, moving on and finishing up with the major FX pairs, looking at uh, Euro dollar and GBP USD, the Euro continues to sink closer to one spot 0820. 57% uh, of CMC market clients are currently long. You can just see where, where we have come from. We've just been in this sideways move market for quite some time. Doesn't look like we're, look, look like we're any different today. One spot 08 has been in play for a while and we're back there again today. And finishing up with cable, uh, one spot 35 is a longer term potential support. Uh, we were as low as one spot 38, 33 there on Friday. Um, it's the first time that the cable, that cable closed below 140 for the month since 1985. So that's certainly not look, looking too pretty. And uh, we have had three, day, three days of gains so far on cable at the moment. 84% of CMC markets clients are currently short, but certainly there's a lot of bearish sentiment out there, especially when you see that longer term trend uh, all the way from here all the way down. In fact, you know, longer term, we've obviously been much uh, much higher than that. If I can just go into the weekly charts for a second, um, we can get a chance to see where we where we were back in 2007 versus where we are now. It's almost it's not quite a half, but uh, one spot 35 is certainly a big big low for GBP USD. Should that happen? Well, that's it for me, guys. Um, matter of fact, before I finish up, quickly have a look at the market calendar. Uh, don't want to forget about the macro data. ADP private payrolls, you've got non-farm payrolls on Friday, private payrolls today, petroleum uh, status update as well. That's going to be quite important. You've got uh, UK house prices tomorrow, PMI from the Eurozone tomorrow, unemployment claims, factory orders, and US ISM numbers. And then Friday, of course, you've got non-farm payrolls and trade balance. So a fair amount of stuff still to get excited about in the markets. That's it from me. Join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next. And um, best of luck. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye.